there's a connection between these problems, between a disengaged president and some very volatile situations abroad. In a few hours, we'll hear what he has in mind for the terrorist onslaught currently in Iraq. We can hope for, and we should look for, signs of a forceful, bold, and immediate strategy to defeat ISIS. We can say already, however, that such a plan would mark an abrupt and dramatic departure from his record thus far. How could he so carelessly sacrifice America's hard-won gains in the region, walking away from friends, leaving violent enemies to fill the void? Like many in our own country, these friends of America cannot understand why the President was so insistent on withdrawing American leadership just when it was needed most. And this is the most critical measure we could apply to the President's remarks today. Any serious strategy has to include a major new commitment to restoring our nation's military preparedness. We simply cannot pursue a comprehensive strategy against terrorism at the same time we're sending pink slips to captains and majors in the combat zone. We must move globally to get back on offense in the war on terror. This means first recognizing and admitting the size and scope of the threat we face. Al-Qaeda is not diminished, nor is the tide of war receding. Wishing doesn't make it so. Our president must understand we are at war and that we must do what it takes for as long as it takes to win.